In today's Leeds news, Leo hailed it to Sunderland. What happened with Hashioka and updates on transfer links so far. Morning folks, Jer here on Monday the 29th of January. Three days left in the transfer window. Leeds need to get moving. Four days, sorry, left in the transfer window. Leeds need to get moving. There's not a huge amount of news on the incomings, but I will clarify some situations that have been floating around and some rumours that are going around. There are some exits expected today as well, so we'll get into this. We'll start off with Leo Hilda and according to Mike McGrath, and has now been backed up by Phil Hay, Adam Pope, and local journalists around Leeds as well. It is expected that Leo Hilda will complete a permanent exit from Leeds United and join Sunderland. There's a lot of talk going around about Leo Hilda. There's a lot of anger this morning that another player is leaving, another defensive player is leaving Leeds. It should be pointed out a couple of things about Leo Hilda. Leo Hilda hasn't been in the Leeds United match day squad since the first half of the year, or the first part of the early part of the season. He has been described as being miles away from first team contention and Leeds opted for a second goalkeeper on the bench at the weekend rather than include Leo Hilda. He has been playing predominantly with the under-21 side. So there's a lot of people thinking that he should be in the team. The last four Leeds United managers, and none of them had fancied him. There's a lot of talk as well about he had a fantastic loan at Rotherham. That's not necessarily the case. He had a very decent first half of his season at Rotherham. He only managed 13 games in his season loan at Rotherham. So that should tell you an awful lot of what you're hearing as well. Um, he did come in with a bit of hype from Celtic, but then Celtic did let him go. And why would Celtic let a young player go to Leeds at that time? He was expected to be a star. He wasn't. There was a lot of talk around his injury history that he had at Celtic as well. Um, and Leeds brought him in. He hasn't really forced his way into the team. He did have opportunities early on the season and really didn't, didn't show anything there. This is more a cleaning of the deck, it appears, from the 49ers and Daniel Farkett to get rid of players that just aren't in the plans going forward and won't be in the plans into next season as well. It's a good move for Leo Hilde. It will allow him to kickstart his career and get some game time elsewhere and see what he does a fee of around 1.5 million pounds is what is being touted at the moment so another player that's likely to leave i'm not bothered about this one because he's not been in the match day squads and he's not seen as an option leads have used other players in the positions rather than leos which tells me that he's very 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 far down the pecking order and not in the plans at all so we're essentially selling an under 21 player here who's not playing first team football that's how we're going to look at this one uh, moving on, let's talk about yesterday's links with uh, Japanese international Hashioka, who out of nowhere yesterday it popped up that the uh, Saint Truden player uh, playing in Belgium was on his way to Leeds United and looked like a deal was about to be completed. Out of nowhere, then it was reported locally that Luton Town had agreed a fee for the player and that they were negotiating the player and he was expected to go to Luton. This went back and forth. There were reports in Belgium claiming that Hashioka was heading to Leeds and the reports in England were saying that Hashioka was was, was heading towards Luton. This morning, it has been clarified. Fabrizio Romano has tweeted out this morning that Hashioka will join Luton Town and is heading there to complete a medical. So the big question is, were Leeds interested and what happened? It appears that Leeds were interested. Um, it was said by Romano that there were, were interest from Leeds, as well as other clubs as well. The issue with Leeds seems to be Hashioka picked up an injury in his final game with uh, St. Truden, which is what kept him out of their game this weekend. On that basis, Leeds have enough injured defenders. So Leeds decided not to bring in another injured fullback and opted away from the move as well. It might be seen as a bit short-sighted. It might be the right thing to do. We won't really know until we see how he gets on that loot and see how many games he plays there and if there is an injury problem there. But I think it's a smart move as well. The last thing Leeds need to do now is try and fill a space that they've got from injured players with another injured player. So I know it might not seem like a great idea at the time, but it's probably a smart move to just not bring in more injured bodies or potentially players who could be you know, suffering with a small injury that could get worse over time but again that will that will all depend on time as well um, moving on then I'm going to give you a couple of uh, rapid fire updates on the players that have been linked with Leeds so far and we'll finish that today's video off with that it's going to be a short one and um, we'll start off with Nat Phillips who was linked last week with Leeds he mentioned a couple of times he was linked in the summer with a move to Leeds United as well the Daily May say Leeds are still interested in the player but they also go on to say that it's expected that he might actually go to Blackburn. There's a, a situation here about coming in and playing, getting guaranteed minutes, which, I mean, he's not going to get in ahead of Joe Rodon. He's not going to get in ahead of probably Ethan Ampadu or Pascal Stroke. So, yeah, there's uh, opportunities there. It looks like he could be heading towards Bolton. Hashioka, as I already mentioned, now looks like he is on his way to Luton. 
Ben Godfrey is the next one that's popped up. His move to Genoa looks like it could be off. This is due to a tax change that has happened in Italy that has affected his £10 million move. The Suns say that Leeds have made a move for the player and that Sean Deitch has given the green light on a move for the player away. This will all come down to structure of deals as well. Godfrey can play as a fullback, can play as a centre-back, has played for Daniel Farrakhan before, so that might get him past some of the early parts that, you know, needing to know if the player fits the style and, and if he can do the right thing. So, there's a possibility there as well. But Ben Godfrey, it looks like a tough one still to get done. But Leeds, um, he does seem like a player that Leeds are keen on trying to get a move done for if they can. The next one move on is uh, Manuel Benson. Sasha Tavaleri had an exclusive last week that he was heading towards Leeds United. Sasha Tavaleri now has a different exclusive saying it's not Leeds United. It's actually Southampton in the first place. And the player is heading off towards Southampton. Uh, it says in Sasha Tavaleri's exclusive that he says that Southampton are the preferred option for Manuel Benson. And that it looks like for all intents and purposes like he will head towards Southampton. The final one that we've been linked with got floating around, same name again as Connor Roberts. The update on him is the Daily Mail are now saying that Brentford are interested in making a move for the player that could be a permanent move for the 24. 20- 28 year old Feyenoord are always are also said to be very interested in the player as well so there is competition for the player there as well it's been said an awful lot I know everyone's kind of not happy with the transfer window right now trust me I'm a content creator who relies on these windows to be my big driver for the year and it hasn't happened there's been not a huge amount of news so but what I will say with this is the kind of players Leeds are looking at bringing in will be players that can go into the starting eleven and make the squad better. Leeds are not looking at buying more bench players because you look at Gellhart, you look at Perveda, they're barely playing, they're barely getting minutes. You look at like Leo Hill, they're not in the squad at all. Leeds are looking at bringing in players that will make the squad stronger going forward. You're not going to spend money and waste contract time and lengths on players that are not going to play for the club and are going to sit on the bench and just gather dust and really not push the club forward at all. That might mean Leeds end up with nobody and that's, that, that, that's not ideal. It's really not ideal. However, I think this will go down to late, very late in the window. Leeds players that it could be looking at could be depending on what's going on in the Premier League as well. There's not been a huge amount of news in the Premier League around signings either. So it's been a pretty quiet January window across the board, both you know, Championship and Premier Division as well. And Leeds will be waiting probably on moves in the Premier League to free up players that they would like to bring in as well. Like the likes of Godfrey and the likes of Conor Roberts, if Burnley and, and Everton aren't using those players, well then they're going to look to try and bring in better players to replace them and then that makes them free and available to move out on loan or go out permanently as well. So it could still happen realistically. I would have liked to see Leeds bring in three players in this window. I, I would settle for two. I'd settle for two fullbacks at this point just to make us a bit more steady. Frees up Archie Gray to move into the midfield area as a backup there as well which gives us more options in the midfield area as well. Jorginho's doing a really good job in number 10 position, so I'm less I'm less worried about that one as well. Although, should he get injured, there's a bit, slight, slight bit of a problem there. But again, what's the point in signing backup players if they're not going to play? That's the point for me. Uh, that's going to be for me today, folks. We will possibly update this week uh, with some live streams in the evening, depending on what happens during the day. If there are signings made, we will go live in the evening to talk about them as well. We'll try to get some guests on as well to have a chat as well. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you either later on or tomorrow morning for more Leeds News. See you then.